What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the PS5 career mode, this is episode number 26. And we start today some stuff with a brief look at our transfer budget on the back of the crazy season opener. And before I go any further, I do want to say real briefly, if you haven't seen the season opener yet, uploaded yesterday, go check it out before you watch this episode, man, because it was unbelievably dramatic. The most dramatic transfer-related episode we've had in this series by quite some distance. And as we know, no more Omar, he's gone to Hoffenheim, our captain, Bright or Say Samuel, leaving us to to go to her to Berlin as well, raising over hundred million pounds for the pair of them. Jack Byrne leaving to Celta Vigo as well. Stefan Bell also left to Dijon too, and of course the new signings coming in: a left back Jamal Lewis from Newcastle United, formerly of Norwich before the Magpies, and also up top Eddie and Ketia. As we know, we signed him from Arsenal, not Wolfsburg. Eddie and Ketia coming in from the Emirates Stadium to hopefully be the new number nine here that gets us the goals on a regular basis. And of course, don't forget Jack Harrison signed on a free transfer as well. So as I run you through the squad, as you can see, we are now a four-star team. I briefly touched on this in the last episode. 79 for attacking and 76 for midfield and defence as well. We are no longer the worst team in the division. In fact, we're the fourth worst team. Is it fourth or possibly fifth, actually? Fourth or fifth worst team in the division right now. There are other teams in this league that are worse than us in this Premier League campaign. So it wasn't a surprise to me at the start of the campaign. The board said finish in mid -tier table this year and that is our league expectation and for me I'm I'm definitely thinking there's a good chance we could do that again around 10th to 13th before we finished off last season but I certainly wouldn't say it's guaranteed I mean finishing in the top 10 would be amazing I think that's probably a little bit too ambitious in our in just our second season in the Premier League but I think we've got a good enough amount of quality in this team to avoid being in a relegation scrap throughout the course of the campaign I guess we just have to wait and see though for the first game of the new season though at the Kai and Prince Foundation Stadium taking on Leicester City who last season had a really poor season finished below us in the table taking on Brendan Rodgers side the Foxes here in West London looking to get off to a winning start in match day one in the Premier League you'll just see in the captain's armband heading into the game I gave it to Andy Rinamotta he's got the team player and solid player traits I really love his energy, medium high work rate. I gave him the armband, I gave him Ketia the star and seven minutes remaining in the first half where he'd looked the best player in the pitch in the first half and number nine scores on his debut to give us the opening goal and his first in a QPR shirt. 37 and a half million pounds was the signing from, again, Arsenal. And a great little ball right chair to play him through. One on one with Kasper Schmeichel, finesses it home and gives us the lead right before the break. It's a big gamble signing Nketiah for that fee when you consider his low goal to game ratio at club level. But he's done it at England youth level. And I think if he gets a home here and some TLC, he can thrive here in this part of London. So final scores 1-0. Kelly made a good save towards the end of the game. But thankfully held on to three points there and the clean sheet too so 1-0 the final score and off to a winning start in what will hopefully be another successful season here at the Kyan Prince Foundation Stadium but again I, I do want to score more goals you know just a 1-0 scoreline you know defensively you saw in that game again we were only breached once Kelly making a great save we're great at the back man don't get me wrong but going forward and Kelly scoring his debut was nice but this year the board have said to us last year with the lowest scorers can't it happen again we need 50 plus goals minimum we do need to put the ball in the back of the net hopefully more times than just one in all of the wins we get this season. Uh, regardless, still not going to say no to a win on the opening day and following out, we had some more transfer offers to consider. Uh, first, Charlie Owens was approached and of course we accepted that deal as he doesn't have too much ability in this team. He's never really going to be a regular tier. So many central midfielders ahead of him in this team. So he's never going to get any game times. So I'm fine selling him. And also, Nico, uh, our American-born Finnish international left-back was approached by BSC Young Boys uh, of Switzerland. And I like Nico as a backup left-back. You know, for Omar, whenever he filled in in the past two years he always seemed to do really really well of course he scored an absolutely bizarre goal one of the most bizarre goals I've ever scored in FIFA way back in season one I'm sure you remember it uh, that ridiculous cross sort of goal which just ballooned up in the air over Tim Krull and into the back of the Norwich goal uh, that was during the regular season back in season one that was bizarre but I'm okay selling him he's got two years left on his deal he's only 70 rated he's in his mid-20s I don't think he's going to get any better than he is right now so I'm okay 
away, cashing in on him and looking to replace him with a better backup left back for now and for the future as well. He's done well though to hold his own in these past two years, but he's never going to get first team football. And again, I'll look to cash in him next season if we didn't sell him this season. So I'm fine letting him go to Switzerland. And so for our second game of today's episode here, we will take on Wolves away at Molyneux, Nuno side away from home. Aims to make it back to back wins to start the campaign off here against one of the strongest sides in the division last year. They were, of course, a top 10 team. Are we going for it once again? And we can see the very early through Patrick Schick heading in a corner and then with four minutes to go before the break. What was I just talking about there? About our defence being superb. So many times in this year's FIFA, I seem to get the ball stuck in my centre-back's feet. Happened once again. Johan Barbe makes a tackle, but it just reflects straight back to Navi Keita, who turns it in from close range, and right before the break, Golovin makes it free as Wolves were in cruise control heading in to the break. One of those games where heading into the match, I just feared the worst right away. Wolves have got a really, really good team. Again, they're a fantastic side. They've got real pace in their side as well. Real first in quality too and Patrick Schick who's just signed for them this season tore me apart in this game he got an assist and a couple of goals as well in what was eventually a 4-0 route for the host Wolves winning the game by four goals to nil a real wake up call after winning on the opening day against Leicester then getting humbled away in the Midlands we'd have a chance for a consolation goal right before the uh, final whistle the final touch of the game actually uh, Charles Bull with a lovely run down left hand side rolling it across Oz Candidate by Patricio though and that was how the game would finish so yep there was me praising the defence after the 1-0 victory on the opening day and we get battered by 4 goals to nil in the following one that's football for you but again a game where once again the, the chances came at a premium and we did have the chance we didn't take them we splashed out a lot of money on Enketia he was kind of anonymous in that game I'll be honest here the board have said we want at least 50 league goals this season season and one goal in our first two games not great obviously a long way to go don't get me wrong but I'm hopeful that we will be better in front of goal this season I mean I'm really really hopeful as Owens and Nico both do leave the club here so farewell to Nico as he goes to BSC Young Boys for 2.5 mil we need to be better in front of goal this year there's no doubt about it I mean if we ever do want to win some major honors then we've got to have someone that scores on a regular basis I've gambled on Eddie and Ketia but there were games like that one against Wolves where I am going to fear if he's not really put his weight I might have to go with Broby or Kelman instead despite the amount of money we spent on the former Arsenal man because he just I, I don't know I'm, I'm confident I'm confident he'll score enough goals for us this season but again you, you got to point out how bad his goal to game ratio has been at club level and there's natural concern over that you know he's not done well for Arsenal didn't do well at his loan spell at Leeds either I'm starting to wonder even though Bawadi would have cost an extra 11 and a half million if I should have gone with Dutch striker I know a lot of you guys think I should have done that I think I made the right call financially speaking and going what the board said as well but at the end of the day Nketiah hasn't really done it so far in his career hopefully he will Will turn it around here in West London. Uh, regardless, after the sale of Nico, we just a bit for Jed Spence from Brighton, and also we signed a new backup left back for uh, Jamal Lewis this season. It's Jay De Silva of Brentford, uh, of course, formerly came out of the Chelsea Youth Academy, uh, signing for I think it was 11 million pounds, maybe 11 and a half million pounds. So pretty pricey uh, for a backup left back, but it was under his market valuation. So a really, really good deal. 11.7 million was in the end, but either way, under his market valuation, he's 20. 24 years old, already 77 rated. He'll have some more potential. Jay De Silva is absolutely rapid and he's a great attack minded fullback slash wingbacks. You know, we love those fullbacks to get forward in this team. That's why Omar was such a fan's favourite because he loved to bomb up the pitch and get involved on the offensive end. Jay De Silva is that sort of player as well. Better when going forward, but also equally good defensively as well. He's really skillful as well. I'm surprised he doesn't have four star skill moves, to be honest. I'm sure Robin's fans would agree with that too. He's very, very good on the ball, very tricky and very skillful, but regardless, absolutely rapid, 77 rated, 24 years old, so we'll still have some potential and room to grow as well. And again, whilst I have signed him as primarily a backup left back for Jamal Lewis, don't be surprised if he ends up taking over as the starting left back in this team. He's only two ratings lower than Jamal and certainly got the quality to be a starting left back in the Premier League. Uh, regardless, following that, we did accept a bid uh, for Liam Kelly as well. He's been our starting goal goalkeeper since the very first season however I'm okay cashing in on the Scott now he's 26 years old 75 rated he's grown really nicely but I'm not sure 
just how much better he can get. And of course, he's conscious of coming the end of the year. I'm okay cashing in and looking for a younger and possibly better goalkeeper as well. And for our third and final game of today's episode, taking on Burnley here at the Kind Prince Foundation Stadium. The Clarets last season were the first team to beat us in the Premier League on match day two here in West London. Aiming for revenge this time around. They got off to the, uh, the good start, scoring the opening goal of the game and making it 1 0. Then, soon after, and Ketia missing an absolute sitter every single time this is a golden chance. I'm going to have my head in my hands thinking, what have I done? Why have I spent so much money on this guy? Iwe should have made it 1 1 there and got his second goal for the club, firing wide from close range. But right before the break, we would see yet another debut goal in this team after Nketia scored on his debut for the club on match day one. And it is indeed Jay De Silva who we just signed from Bristol City for £11.7 million. Pounds. Brought him in from the Robins. I thought I'd start him in this game ahead of Jamal Lewis and see what he could do on his debut and scores his first goal for the club as well. But I will be honest here. Bailey Peacock Farrell will want that one back. Shocking goalkeeping, but the silver claims it regardless. And in the end, that was how the game would finish as well. Final score, QPR 1, Burnley 1. So one win, one draw and one loss in our first three games to start the campaign off. Not too bad. Four points taken from a possible nine. That sort of is mid-table form, really. But only two goals in our first three games. You know that was our problem last season. And again, in catch, you just won in free to start the campaign off. Already missed one sitter as well. Yeah, I'm starting to think Myron Bawadu in the championship for West Brom right now. I probably should have spent the extra 11.5 mil to bring the Dutch striker in. I, look, it's a long season. We're only three games in. And Ketty can still shut my mouth and prove me wrong. But there is a little bit of concern. I will be honest here. Uh, regardless, following the game, you did see Liam Kelly has indeed gone to Spain. He's off to Espanyol. So in the Bundesliga this year, we'll have Omar versus Bright. In La Liga, you'll have Jack versus Liam. But uh, following that, I decided to bring in a new goalkeeper to replace Liam Kelly to Scott. When I had three goalkeepers on my shortlist I really wanted, Angus Gunn, Sam Johnston, and also Freddie Woodman as well. I'll be honest, I really wanted Sam Johnston. I thought that would be a realistic from a relegated side in West Brom, but sadly he'd moved on, as had Angus Gunn. Johnston went to Schalke, Gunn went to St Etienne, I think it was. So two of the goalkeepers I wanted have both moved in this transfer window. That left me with only one choice. That was Freddie Woodman of Newcastle United, and we signed him for £12.5 million. And in the end, I think it was probably the best deal out of three, regardless. 77 rated. 25 years old so he's two ratings higher than Liam Kelly and a year younger as well and for 12.5 mil I love the fact that GK kicking at 80 is his best stat as we'd love to play out from the back and as he's still quite young in his mid-20s as well learning from Ben Foster he was never going to get a game at the Magpies you know with Martin Dubravka being their starting goalkeeper so he needs to leave to get first team football he's going to get it here Freddie Woodman comes in as our second and final signing of today's episode but there's still money remaining and still a couple of weeks for the transfer window will slam shut the transfer window is far from done here at the Kind Prince Foundation Stadium. I'm sure there's still more sales and signings to come. But that was this episode of the PS5 Karimo, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you for the next episode of the PS5 Karimo featuring a transfer deadline day very soon.